sustainable development is as good a goal today as it was 25 years ago when the term was first coined. I think the dilemma is that we've made real progress in some areas and we've made um, no progress in some others and the progress that we've made is now imperiled by the lack of sustainability in the economic uh, system. And so I think for us in the World Bank what we're looking to Rio for is a demystification of what more inclusive and greener growth means. It isn't the goal, it's the pathway to sustainable development. And every country is at a different point in that pathway, but there are things that every country can do on the Monday after Rio to make their economy greener and more inclusive. Economic growth can become much more efficient, and as it becomes much more efficient, be much uh, more supportive of the natural systems and the ecosystems that we depend upon for life. That we uh, can develop markets um, that value um, uh, ecosystem services, and that that will allow domestic generation of resources to invest in the things that countries want to invest in in order to grow greener and in order to have more inclusive growth. We will not be able to be sustainable if inequity continues to rise within countries, even while equity is increasing between countries. So the world is becoming more equitable, but within countries it's becoming more inequitable. That's not sustainable. Um, I think the, the, the issue is that we, we actually know a lot of what we need to do, but for behavioural, economic and other reasons we're not doing it. And so we need to attack each uh, bad subsidy, we need to attack each inefficiency systematically, country by country, and move the world to a, a, a greener growth path. Essential to do it now, we don't have time. Time is not on our side. Climate change is like an accelerant. It's making everything more difficult to do. And so the, f the future of development is building the resilience of natural systems, of communities, of cities and of countries. And so for us as a development institution, everything we do now is about resilience and adaptation. My experience as an activist, my experience now in senior management of the World Bank Group really leads me to believe that you know, if consensus is elusive and global consensus seems to be difficult to find in the text negotiations for Rio and we know from the climate convention that it's been painfully slow to, to be arrived at, um, it doesn't stop those who want to move ahead from moving ahead and we see like-minded groups you know, getting together around sustainable energy for all or uh, around climate smart agriculture uh, or around uh, red plus for forests. I mean we've seen over the last few years that groups get together and move ahead and we don't need to wait for the last one country to say it's okay before we do so. And I think it's terribly important that we have that kind of leadership in Rio and after Rio because there's a new generation of people who don't remember Rio the first time around and they need to be inspired that collective action can produce results. And if we can't achieve that at a global scale, we can certainly achieve it by like-minded countries, like-minded stakeholders and like-minded private companies from around the world getting together and saying, it's in our interest not to wait and we're going to move forward.